There is a, a, a prayer, maybe you read it on the internet or on email, it went around not that long ago. Uh, it goes something like this. It, it, it says, so far today, God, I've done all right. I haven't gossiped. I haven't lost my temper. I haven't been greedy, grumpy, nasty, selfish, overindulgent, or told anyone to mind their own business and to stay out of mind. I'm really glad about that. But in a few minutes, God, I'm going to get out of bed. And from then on, I'm going to need a whole lot of help. In Jesus' name, amen. Isn't that the truth? Can you relate to that? Could you have written that, actually? It might have been in your prayer. Right? It's a crazy time. And it's, uh, you know, I went out shopping and yesterday a little bit. I haven't been out much before that, but I went out shopping yesterday. And it's crazy out there. I mean, it's like people got money. I don't know why don't they come to church, but the uh, <laughs> but uh, but it's um, but it's like you know people out everywhere. There was lines everywhere. There was you had to park like a great distance. I felt like the wise men coming from a great distance just to get to a shop because because everybody's out shopping, right? I mean, I don't know if you've been out or not, but it's kind of it's kind of crazy. And, and there's not a lot of peace out there. There's really not. You know. It's not. It's kind of uh, it's kind of chaotic. It's more of a, a, a better word. Everybody's scrambling to get the perfect gift, and uh, I mean, and it's for me. I want them to go through for that through that effort. I really do. But if it, but for other people, it's not that important. But but beyond that, it's, it's really kind of chaotic out there. And there, I, I can tell you, you know, this whole thing of, of peace doesn't come to mind when I'm out shopping for Christmas. Right? There's no peace about it at all. As a matter of fact, I, I didn't even see a hint of joy. I saw no smile. I kind of like sometimes in here. I didn't see any smile. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't see any smiles. The only joy I saw was on a sign that said joy. J O Y. So oh, there's some joy. Christmas joy right there. But 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 there wasn't much joy. It doesn't seem much like the Christmas that I heard about. The Christmas that we put together for Advent season, right? Where we celebrate those things, right? Peace and and joy and love. Right? It's kind of crazy out there. But who created that? We did. We did. Yes, with me. We, we, we're the author of that right there. We can own it. We can put our name and sign our name on it. We, we wrote that. That's, that's, that's our world. We created it. We live it. We celebrate it. But I wonder if it was always that way. You think it was always that way? Was it always just crazy? You know, rushing around, trying to fit all these Christmas parties and got to decorate and got to wrap 4,000 gifts to fit under a two-foot tree with 4,000 light bulbs. And, you know, has it always been that kind of crazy? No. And I wonder what it was like back like when Jesus was born. You ever wonder that? Was the first Noel so crazy? Was it hectic? Was there peace on earth? And was there joy? And the more I thought about it, and, and I'm not a big time travel person, you know, I'm not a scientist, but, but I read an article that you could actually travel back in time if you would close your eyes and count to ten slowly. Now, how many of you believe that? I have one belief in the whole group. Bless you. Bless you. You know, sometimes you got to experience things before you actually will believe them, don't you? So let's try it. Shall we? Are you with me? Yep. There's no cheat. <laughs> I mean, if you cheat, you're going to ruin it for the whole group. <laughs> so look to your neighbor, look to the right, look to the left, and say, don't cheat. Don't cheat. No, we're, you're in church. No cheating. All right? Now, who will lead us in the, in the county? I need somebody, my believer. No, I want my believer. Come on, boy. Come, come stand up here. All right, so you stand here because you, you, show me that count. How's it go? One, two. Yeah, perfect. All right, so you're going to lead them, all right? So everybody close their eyes. Everybody got their eyes closed? No peeking. If you peek, it's, gonna, it's, just, it's just not going to be good. All right, you got to count loud so I can hear you. All right, ready, go. One, two,
<laughs> Where'd you come from? I'm just going to go sit down. <laughs> where, where, where did all of you come from? Where did you come from? This is my place. I work here. I own this. You go for lunch and you come back and... I'm sorry you've had to wait. I hope you haven't had to wait long. Y'all sure are dressed funny. Did you, did you not know you were going out in public? It's, don't worry. Don't worry. I don't judge people. I don't judge people at all. I see all kinds of people in my business. As a matter of fact, I see all shapes and sizes. People dress of all kinds. That's kind of what you get when you, when you work at an inn. You know, people coming from all over the place, but I don't judge them. Most of the time, I don't even remember them. I don't remember their names or their, their faces or, or, or anything about them. What, what is it you're here for? You're here for the story, aren't you? This many people can't be here for a room. You're here for the story. They always come for the story. I don't blame them. It's a good story. And I like to tell them. It's not too bad at all, actually. I remember pretty well. Well, most of it. If I forget, can you fill it in? Oh, you don't know the story. Well, let me just tell you. It all started when our ruler, occupier, decided that he needed to take a census so he could tax us some more. Imagine that, a government wanting to tax the people. I can't imagine why. Anyway, it required people to leave wherever they were at and to go to the city of their ancestry. Some people had to travel large distances. Some people short. Some people already lived in the town. Our town was a little quiet town. It really wasn't that big at all. And all of a sudden, it blew up. People were coming from all over the place to register. It was kind of good for business, i got to admit. You know, a lot of work for me, but the missus. <laughs> she liked having the extra money, you know, so she could go out and spend it. Anyway, anyway. I remember it pretty well. The city had blown up. It was very busy. The streets were full. We were full. We had been full for weeks. No room at the end. I couldn't even order a no vacancy sign because I didn't have them back then. But if they did, there was no room at the end. And so I had settled in after a long day's work. I was taking a nap. There's nothing wrong with naps. People say naps are for little kids, but they're not. They're for adults. Especially hard-working adults. And I was taking a nap. And I had just put my head down well. And I heard a, someone knocking on my, my door. And I got up and I answered the door. And there was this, this young couple. And they were nice enough. But he asked the stupidest question. <laughs> he said, do you have any room? And I stopped him right there. It's like, buddy, <laughs> there's no room here. As a matter of fact, I haven't had a room in weeks. This city is booming with people. Look around. Do you think anybody here has a room? You've come to the wrong place. I'm sorry I can't help you. You seem like a nice guy, but you gotta go. I gotta get back to my man. And before I had even turned good, he was like, but sir, I was like, but seriously, I told you no in the nicest way I could. He said, but sir, my wife is expecting. And it won't be long before she will deliver. Don't you have something? And I looked behind him and there stood a woman, a beautiful woman. And you could tell it was just about that time. You know how you can tell when you, I'm not saying anything about, but you know, you can tell when someone's about. <laughs> anyway, you know, they seem nice enough. 
and I really wanted to help him. But I really couldn't make another room. There was no room at the end. And I told him, I'm really sorry, but I have nothing for you. But I know a guy who might be able to help you, at least give you some shelter. You see, I had a friend. He worked at the, the Tower of the Flock. So I took them over to the Tower of the Flock. And it, it's, Tower of the Flock is kind of a, well, uh, it's not real pretty. Some people would call it a stable or a barn or a cave. Or, it's a place, it's a place they brought the animals that were to be sacrificed in the temple. Now, it wasn't just an ordinary place. It was actually, some of, those, some of those animals got treated pretty good. Those lambs that they brought, they were born to be sacrificed. They had to be perfect. They, couldn't, they had to be without blemish. And you know what those shepherds there would do? They'd wrap them in swaddling clothes. they put them in a manger like that. They, they treated them better than they do people. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I'm getting off the subject. I introduced him to this guy. And he was able to provide them with shelter. I felt good. I had done my good deed. I had helped him out. But I had a nap to get back to, to be honest. I was tired. So I left the people there. They were very overly grateful for what I had done for them and headed back to my inn. After a short journey and getting back and getting settled in, I fell asleep with my head on the counter. I was tired. I make no apologies for it. It didn't seem like that long, although it would probably been a few hours, and I was caught in dreamland. I was dreaming that dream, you know, the one <laughs> where the camel shows up with the bags of gold. It's my favorite dream. Anyway, anyway, and I heard this seriously in the middle of the night. You're going to come wake me up. So I got the cobwebs out of my head, and I went to the door, and there was a group of shepherds. And I know they didn't want no room. I didn't rent rooms for shepherds anyway. They just have a smell about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I'm not. You know, anyway. So I asked them what they were doing. They were very nice. And they apologized for waking me because it was obvious that I had just woken up. And they asked, they said, you know, we hate to wake you, but we're looking, we're looking for a newborn baby. And I looked at my, like, what? They said, well, your light was on. I had left my lamp burning. My wife always tells me to cut it off, but I forget. Anyway, I left my lamp burning. So that's why they had stopped at my door. And they said, you know, we're looking. You're not going to believe this story. And they started to tell me the story. They had been out in the fields, and all of a sudden, they said, an angel appeared to them. And they said, you know, to be honest, we were afraid. Like, we were really, like, really afraid. We were petrified. And the angel said, fear not. And I bring you good news, good news, a great joy for unto, for, to be for all the world, for unto you, born this day in the city of David, a Savior. And you know, we kind of looked at each other like, really? And, 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 and before we even had a chance to respond with each other, there was a multitude, a heavenly host, who appeared and were singing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill towards men. Now when I heard them tell this story, at first I thought well, maybe they had been in the yeah. Maybe they had a little bit too much wine out there in the fields, but they were not joking and they were not intoxicated. But what they were is determined. They were determined to find this baby. And I thought for a minute, I had no one here that had a baby or was expecting a baby. And I told them, I'm sorry, I don't have anybody here who has a child. So I'm not really sure how I can help you. And they said they really just felt like, like God had led them here and that I would have the answers. And I said, well, what did the angel say again? And he told me, he said, they would, 
she would find the child wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And then it dawned on me that young couple was expecting. And they were at a barn. I said, guys, I don't know, but let me take you where it might be. And we walked, and as we walked, we arrived, and as we approached the entrance to the barn, we heard a baby's cry. Wow. It was amazing. We knew we were at the right place. And we ran in. And lo and behold, what did we find? But a baby. Wrapped in swaddling clothes. Lying in a manger. It is just as the angel had foretold. This must be the Savior child. And as we entered the room, the shepherds ran to the manger and they fell to their knees to worship this child like he was a king. And I got to tell you, I don't know what happened. But I felt this urge myself. And I came and I knelt with the shepherds. I started to think I had turned away this baby to be born in a manger, but somehow he was born into my heart. What an awesome night. What a holy night. What a peaceful night it was. And the joy that was in my heart was overflowing as I returned to my, to my inn and my place of slumber and the peace that filled me. And as I started to think about over time what had happened, I, I, I realized that I had almost missed it. That I had almost missed the coming of the Savior child because I had no room at the end, but I had made room for him in my heart. And I wonder how many people miss the Christ child because they're too busy and there's no room in their end. I wonder if there's room in their heart. How about you? Is there room in your heart for the Christ child? Or is the season just too busy? Well, that's it. That's all the story I got. And I'm glad you dropped by, but I got to tell you, I got to get back to work. <laughs> if the wife knew I was spending this much time even talking to you, she'd come out here and say, oh, you're telling that story again, aren't you? So, so I mean, I, I, I don't want to be rude, but I got to go. So I don't know how y'all got here, but however you got here, you might want to turn around, reverse it, and go back to where you were. <laughs> Ten.
Where y'all been? Back in time. What happened? He talked to the innkeeper. What did he say? He told us the story about the birth of Jesus. Really? Yeah. How was it? Was it? Yeah. I've heard about that. I've heard about how there was no room at the inn, but he made room in his heart. Did y'all hear about that? Yeah. Wow. That's a great question, isn't it? Is there room in your heart during this Christmas season for Christ? Or have we gotten so busy that we forgot the reason for the season? You know, all this gift giving only seeks to remind me that God's already given us the perfect gift, has you know, if I had needed more intellect, God would have sent me an educator. If I had needed food, he'd have sent me a chef. If I had needed a bridge, he'd have sent me an engineer. But God knew I needed, and that you needed, and that the world needed a Savior. So he sent the perfect gift, his son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the gift that keeps on giving. The gift that gives day after day, year after year. The gift of His love, His grace and His mercy. That peace and that joy that comes from that relationship with your Lord and Savior. What a wonderful gift. What a beautiful gift. It's without a doubt the perfect gift. But the question today is, do you have room to receive it? My prayer is, as you all already have and you always do, rejoice in the Lord each and every day. But if you have it, mm, today's a good day. For none of us has promised tomorrow. You see, because if you want to experience that peace and that joy that surpasses all understanding, it's not going to come from those malls or even the strip centers or even the internet. You see, the perfect gift is right here today in Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.